In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good morning. It's good to see all of you in church this morning during this glorious period where we see in the streets and the lanes of our city all the beautiful decorations, all the beautiful preparations. And all of us, of course, hopefully, are preparing for the great feast of the Nativity of Christ. It is a great celebration. Each of us, probably in our families, have our own little traditions, have our own little practices. But nevertheless, all of us prepare. And how do we prepare? We call our families. We decide which of our relatives is going to host Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, all of those beautiful things. And hopefully, also, we will be looking at the schedules to know when the church services are so we can come as a family to worship for the great birth of Jesus Christ. But of all those preparations, of everything we see, maybe the most important or the most beautiful that we have during the season is our Christmas tree. We all love Christmas trees. And too many times, so many times, we hear in the press and we hear the cynics of our time condemning us for being so commercial and wanting to have all of this stuff and to give gifts and all the other stuff that they complain about. And yet, our Christmas tree cannot be any more profoundly religious or spiritual. Have you ever thought about that? What does it stand for? What does a real tree give us or tell us? The, that it is evergreen, evergreen. If you want greenness in this world, just look at the Christmas tree. Even if it's not real, even if it's artificial, it tells to us that something is eternal. It represents eternity. The greatest message the Christ, that the church has to give is the fact that our souls are eternal. And the Christmas tree represents that concept, that issue, that teaching of eternity. What a beautiful, beautiful tradition. But what, we, what do we do on this Christmas tree? First of all, we put a star on the top of the Christmas tree. And the star, of course, represents the star of Bethlehem. But what was so important about the star of Bethlehem? And does it really relate to us? You bet it does. The Star of Bethlehem directed the shepherds. The Star of Bethlehem directed the Magi. The Star in Heaven is the light that Christ brings that directs all of us in our life. Now, after the Star, we usually put on lights all over the tree. And what do the lights represent when we drive down the street on a dark night and we see a house all bright in lights? What is the first thing that should come to our minds? or when we walk into our living room and we see our tree full of lights, the first thing that comes to our mind is that Christ is the light of the world. Those lights represent the great light that he brought into the world. Just like when you light a candle, when you come into church, you're telling Christ, I believe that you are the light. You have brought light into my life, into this world. And no matter how much darkness I'm experiencing in my life, that light will direct me. That light will brighten me. That light will never allow me to succumb to darkness. And at Christmas, with all the different color lights, it is even a more profound expression of, of love to God. It's like doing your cross, which is telling God, I love you. It's the same effect when you plug in those lights. You're showing the world and everybody who sees that tree that you love God and you believe he is the light of the world. What else do we put on that tree? We put ornaments, beautiful ornaments. So what do those ornaments represent? They're us. They're, they're not really us. They're our talents. They're the gifts God has given us. Those are all of the talents. Just look at what God has given you, your abilities, your talents. Every one of you is different. Every one of you is special because God put his own fingerprint on you. So you will be different and more expressive and just as important as anybody next to you. 
just as important as anybody who has power or money or influence. You too have those talents. All you have to do is recognize them and put them to work. Every ornament on the tree represents those talents that God has gifted us with. And it's such a beautiful expression of love when we hang all those beautiful ornaments showing the colors of the talents that God has given the world. What else do we put on the tree? We put garland. The garland is a very profound expression of love because the garland is a never-ending string. The never-ending string represents the sacraments of the church and the love that God gave us by leaving us and developing the love of the church and the traditions of the church. One tradition is music. That music in the church that you hear from the choir and the chanters, that music brings us to a spiritual realm. And though that garland tells us that we are all connected in Jesus Christ. We're all together. We are all one family, never ending. What else do we put on the tree? Well, we put sometimes wreaths on the tree. And the wreath, like the garland, is a never ending circle of love. It reminds us of God's love. It never ends. It's always there. No matter how much pain we have in our lives, no matter how much glory we have in our lives, or happiness we have in our lives, it's never ending if we turn to God and say, you are the one who presented me and gifted me with this love. Now under the tree we have gifts. Oh, the gifts are really important, aren't they? Of course they are. We take a lot of effort to get that special gift for those people that we care about and love. And indeed, those gifts have a very important purpose. Because who is the greatest gift? What is the greatest gift we have ever received? And that was Jesus Christ. And he was born in the manger on Christmas Day for one purpose and one purpose only, to save us. He came here to sacrifice himself, to give of himself, so that we never, ever would know death or the end. Up to that point in history, the Jews believed that death was the very end. There was nothing beyond. Christ came and changed all that and told us that if you believe and you follow me, you indeed will never know death. And that's what Christmas is all about. It's the greatest gift we ever received. Of course, the center of our faith has to do with our sacrifice and our personal resurrection, our personal Pascha. But without that gift, the Pascha would not be able to happen. It would have never been. We also understand at Christmas that there's another special person besides Christ that comes into our lives, and that is Santa. Is Santa real? Oh, you bet he is. You bet he is. Because Santa Claus didn't just fall out of the sky. The concept of Santa Claus and the belief of Santa comes from the life of a beautiful saint of our church that we celebrated last week, St. Nicholas of Myra. But no matter if it's St. Nicholas, no matter if it's St. Vasilio, St. Basil, no matter if it's St. Nectarios, all these saints are our models. They're our teachers. They give us the ability to live the kind of life we need, indeed, to really experience what Christ promised us of course, salvation. He promised us that, that if we believe in him, we will never know death. That's why he came to earth. That's why he was born in the humble manger for all of us to understand that life goes on even if an accident or an illness takes us from this physical world. That's only the beginning, the beginning of our souls experiencing eternity. And finally, we uh, understand this on a beautiful level. And all we have to do is look at the icon. I know there's one here somewhere, isn't there? Icon of the Nativity of Christ. When we look at that icon, we realize that this humble scene, this humble reality brings us the gift, the greatest gift that anybody 
could ever understand or ever have in life, and that is the birth of the Savior, that we will be saved if we believe in him. You, each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters, are the Christmas tree. We have that tree within us. All we need to do is show it off. All we need to do is plug it in. That's why we come to communion. That's why we participate in the sacraments and the traditions of the church. Because when we leave the, the, the church, when we encounter others, others may be having difficulty or pain, a simple hug, a simple expression of love tells that person that indeed we believe that in Christ and we believe that you too could have the light if you follow me. Because that's what Christ said. Leave everything and follow me. That's what you tell people when you do the sign of cross at a restaurant in front of you, you're telling everybody that sees you, I believe that Christ is the light of the world. Follow me. Follow me. That's the important and profound message of Christmas. He came to earth to give of himself so that all of us would certainly understand that his gift was the greatest gift that we, he could give and that we have to give that back to our brothers and our sisters, because if we don't meet Christ in the, in the eyes, in the face, in the person of our sisters and our brothers, we will never know him. We will never know him. It's what you're giving to each other. That's why you hear preachers and you hear programs in churches asking for donations so we could give to the poor. Those things are profound expressions of love. They are extremely important for each of us to participate in because he gave us that message. He asked us to do exactly that. No matter how humble or no matter how important we may be, indeed, that expression of love really is the difference between salvation and not salvation. So I pray, my beloved brothers and sisters, that this Christmas, your preparations for Christmas will help us understand exactly who we are and where we're going. And I hope that you teach your children when you're finishing the tree or finishing the decorations, how important and how spiritual those decorations could really be. Especially when you take an icon of the, of the nativity and you can get one probably in the bookstore, I hope. Yes, we have them, our bookstore director says. And put that icon somewhere on the tree because that icon really brings everything together, really makes all those decorations profoundly important to each person who views that tree and views that icon of the nativity because that's what it's really all about. God bless you and I hope and pray that this Christmas is a glorious one and brings you much joy and happiness and much direction that Christ has brought into the world for he loves each and every one of us in such a special way. Amen.